New World War Revolutionary Methods for Political Control The Other World Introduction to Psychopathy In future chapters we'll explore a pattern of activities exhibited by several groups that have been hyperactively establishing control of the planet, as well as a method known as problem-reaction-solution that rulers have used to set up dictatorships. So, to better understand the ruthless mindset necessary for such practices it will be helpful to have an understanding of psychopathy. Psychopathy is a character deficiency that includes traits and behaviors such as, unreliability, failure to learn by experience, lack of insight, an absence of delusions or nervousness, superficial charm, charisma, frequent lying, deceitful and manipulative behavior, and a lack of conscience. Other traits are, a poverty of general emotions, lack of remorse or shame, incapacity for love and empathy, antisocial behavior, frequent need for excitement, an inflated ego an ability to rationalize destructive behavior, and a need to have power over others. It is present in about 4% of the population, that is, 1 in 25 people.1 psychopaths can be found in every race, culture, profession, and class. The significant amount of damage they cause is common. Other terms that have been used to describe psychopathy include antisocial personality disorder, APD, conduct disorder, CD, and sociopathy. APD and CD are used to describe these character types in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders 4. The term sociopath, although not an actual medical term, is used by some as a substitute for psychopath. Those who believe the deficiency is caused by environmental factors use the term sociopath, and believers of the biological theory use the term psychopath. Researchers seem to differ regarding traits, terms, and the degree of disturbances that constitute a diagnosis. However, it is generally agreed that these terms are similar. So for the scope of this study they are synonymous. It is important to note that psychopaths don't simply have a diminished capacity for remorse, empathy, or love, but a complete inability to experience these emotions. They have literally no conscience whatsoever. Point two. A conscience has been described as a need to do right or be good. It leads to feelings of remorse, shame, or guilt when people do things that are against their moral values. It also causes feelings of goodness and integrity when we view our actions as correct. It can be viewed as a result of biological drives that influence people to avoid causing fear and hatred in others. In order to have a conscience, a person must be able to identify themselves with others. They must have empathy. Cause The exact cause of psychopathy is unknown. It appears to be the result of environmental or biological factors. It may be hereditary, although this hasn't been confirmed. Some types of brain scans can allegedly detect psychopathy by measuring responses to questions which should trigger emotional reactions. It is usually untreatable and incurable. Therapists will often not work with them due to their pathological lying. There are social rules that most adults learn to live by and follow without thinking because they're so basic. Human beings automatically trust each other to follow these social rules. They trust that, despite their shortcomings, they're all at least trying to contribute to the human race. However, on a fundamental level, some people are radically different. Researchers describe psychopaths as having an empty hole in their psyche where the most evolved of human functions should be. In his book Political Ponerology, A Science on the Nature of Evil Adjusted for Political Purposes, Dr. Andrew Lobazowski explains that the reason for this is that these individuals do not have certain information that exists on a basic level, which he refers to as the instinctive substratum. The instinctive substratum is essentially a set of instructions that is a vital part of the life of individuals and entire societies. It was developed over a period of time as the human species lived in groups. It contains information, wisdom, and particularly, an emotional content that allows people to develop their feelings and social bonds. The necessity for a social structure and the need to play a worthy role within the structure is encoded at this level. It also has information that counters our self-preservation instinct that compels us to want to contribute to the human race, rather than exclusively to our own personal interests. This common substratum plays a critical role in linking us to society. It enables us to perceive other people's emotional states. It allows us to detect and understand human customs and moral values. It has allowed civilizations throughout the centuries to create human, social, and moral concepts that are notably similar. Basically, this substratum is critical for the survival of the human species. Beginning in infancy, it starts to stimulate activities that allow for the development of higher mind functions, and the formation of our character. A more subtle structure is then built upon this substratum as we grow older, 
eventually becoming an observable part of our personality. This common substratum applies to most normal people. However, each society has a minority of people who are not normal. This does not include people who are statistically abnormal, such as those with very high intelligence. Instead, it pertains to individuals who are both statistically small in number and who contain an irregular substratum. These individuals can affect millions of others in negative ways. Such individuals are carriers of a substratum which contains gaps regarding emotional information that is responsible for the deficits of higher feelings, as well as abnormalities in psychological, moral, and social concepts. Upon this irregular substratum, such an individual's character develops. As this happens, character defects develop in conjunction with these gaps. The result of the individual's character formation upon this foundation has been called psychopathy. It is taken for granted and self-evident that underneath it all we're all basically the same. However, it has been suggested that these people are not quite human as we know it. A person carrying a deviation on this level will be more distinguishable among his own race and time period than a person with a normal substratum living in a different time period or culture. The emotional content which these characters lack on this basic level impairs their ability to self-reflect, which is an important part of personal growth. Self-reflection occurs during disintegrative and integrative periods when we undergo changes caused by life events. These are usually uncomfortable periods. These events cause us to perform internal inspections of our character. During these times, changes are made to our personalities. Errors are corrected. New outlooks are formed. These changes are then integrated into our personality and help us pass through the disintegrative stage. Positive feelings which we experience after passing through these stages validate our new outlook. We see things differently. The conditions we survive take on a new meaning. It is a type of purification. We achieve a higher level of understanding of the laws of life. We understand ourselves and others better. Basically, we grow. High-level emotions play an essential role in guiding us through a normal developmental process. They are responsible for the act of self-reflection and serve as confirmation signals that we have successfully completed a stage of growth. The combination of emotions such as empathy, shame, guilt, and remorse, as well as a biological drive to do well, are considered a conscience. The conscience triggers the act of self-reflection. If the issues that led to the disintegration have not been resolved because the uncomfortable feelings were repressed, the circumstances were too overwhelming, we lacked the information necessary for reintegration, or some other reason, then the results are devolutionary. In this case our personalities contract. We become smaller. This is a type of retreat where our psyche retains the sensation of failure. To compensate, our egos become larger. We become neurotic and more difficult to get along with. Dr. Lobazowski mentions that due to the emotional deficiency on a very basic level, psychopaths are unable to access these high-level emotions which are critical for personal growth. They are unable to self-reflect. Therefore, they are unable to grow. They are basically stuck. It appears that perhaps unconsciously these characters are able to understand that this process is necessary, but are unable to complete its phases due to their emotional deficiency. The inflation of the ego, e.g. selfishness, a need for power, immaturity, a sense of entitlement, beliefs of superiority, is a substitute for growth. Or, in other words, it is a type of false self that allows them to consciously deal with their failure. Profile Outline Psychopaths are completely aware of being different, which is why they go out of their way to conceal themselves. Although they are able to hide their beliefs and traits from others, their psychological makeup is amazingly consistent. They all exhibit antisocial or aggressive behavior whether overt or covert, they are all egotistic, they all demand whatever they believe they are entitled to, they all appear selfish, they all demand that others respect them or submit to them. And foremost, they must have power over others. Like normal people, some are lazy, others are ambitious. Some are very smart, others are not. Most are somewhere in between. The less intelligent ones are driven to satisfy basic needs such as food or sex. These individuals may be less charming, they may attempt to deceive in blunt ways, and then resort to abusive demands when their tactics fail. Others have better manipulation skills, using charm and verbal fluency to get others to submit. These individuals may seek high-level positions of power, control, or fame. Whatever their position, their lives are reduced to an endless game of attempted domination over others. They manipulate and attack others in ways that are often undetectable. They do so not just to accomplish their goals but because they find it enjoyable. 
It offers them excitement and sadistic pleasure. Their world. Psychopaths view the world much differently than normal people. Researchers vary in their opinions as to whether or not a normal person can ever understand this different world. It has been stated that normal people using the common worldview will not be able to understand how psychopaths think. There are several factors regarding the worldview of the psychopath. First, there is their self-image, next is the way they see others, and finally, the way they see the world. Psychopaths see themselves as superior to normal people. They see normal people in the following ways, objects, obstacles, targets, simple to deceive, naive, weak, inferior, a separate species. An important consideration here is that these individuals do not regard normal people as human beings worthy of any compassion whatsoever. They absolutely despise weakness. In fact, they become experts in the weaknesses of normal people. They are completely aware of being different. They understand that they live in a separate world and must conceal themselves. They are also aware that most people are not aware that this other world exists. Because they do not have access to certain emotions, psychopaths view the behavior of normal people as curious or silly. The emotional reactions of normal people appear to be strange or even funny to them. They also think that that the emotional lives of others are as empty as theirs. In addition to seeing themselves as superior creatures, they believe their worldview is superior to that of the normal persons. The worldview of normal humans is considered by psychopaths to be incomprehensible and without justification. They view the social structure dominated by normal people as a system of force and oppression. They see the customs and ethics of such a society as foreign, silly, and ridiculous. For instance, they see religion as foolish. They know the difference between right and wrong but don't allow it to limit their behavior. They can't understand why so many others are unwilling to deceive people. They even think that others don't have a conscience and are play acting, and therefore, rationalize that at least they're being real in a society of phonies. Psychopaths construct their separate worldview while functioning in a society of normal people and easily perceive the flaws of the common worldview used in such a society. In fact, they rely on these flaws. More on worldviews will be covered shortly. No conscience. A conscience allows us to determine whether our actions are right or wrong. It leads to feelings of remorse, shame, or guilt when people do things that are against their moral values. It also causes feelings of goodness and integrity when we view our actions as correct. It inspires people to avoid causing fear and hatred in others. In order to have a conscience, one must understand that they are the same as others on a very basic level. Psychopaths have no conscience. Psychopaths exist in a primarily cognitive world. They are completely unable to feel high-level emotions such as love, compassion, remorse, guilt, or shame. They are also unable to accurately detect these emotions in others. Psychopathy is basically an emotional disorder. Psychopaths do experience primitive emotions such as frustration, anger, rage, envy, and hatred, as well as minor hints of depression. They also experience sadistic pleasure and excitement. Although they don't experience high-level emotions, they are fully aware that most people have them. Many even take time to mimic them in order to blend in and manipulate their victims better. During conversations, they avoid words with emotional content because they do not understand them. However, they may deliberately use them if they believe it will advance an act of deception. Trained observers can usually detect this type of acting because the proficiency they achieve in faking emotions is shallow. Intelligence slash professions Measured by standardized tests, their intelligence is about average or slightly lower than normal. Psychopaths as a group are not highly intelligent. Neither are they gifted artists or craftsmen. They also exhibit a lack of wisdom which appears to have no impact on their IQ. Academically, they are similar to normal people. The common myth of their genius, which they like to play upon, is really attributed to the special skills they develop which allow them to deceive and manipulate people. On average they are not as goal-oriented as normal people. Although, they frequently brag about how ambitious they are. Many graduate from college or obtain other professional credentials, usually by working the system rather than genuine effort. Once in the workforce, they usually avoid tasks that they consider boring or difficult. Psychopaths function fine as lawyers, doctors, psychiatrists, teachers, police officers, military personnel, mercenaries, business people, politicians, writers, artists, actors, cult leaders, and many other professions without breaking the law. Their careers, family, social skills, and other circumstances are part of their mask. The true difference between these psychopaths and the ones that end up in prison is that they are better at appearing normal. 
Although they may attain positions of high status and success, they are parasitic in nature and prefer to live off the efforts of others. Whatever their job, they engage in repeated acts of deception and manipulation. They manipulate and attack the people around them as often as they can without getting caught. They do this both for personal gain and simply because it gives them a thrill. Egotism slash power slash rationalization. Psychopaths have tremendous egos. That is, they have an inflated self-worth or a grandiose sense of who they are. They demand that others respect and submit to them. They are conceited, boastful, and selfish. The ego has been described as the thinking I or the self which views itself as separate from others in the world. It is part of the psyche that experiences and reacts to the outside world. It perceives and adapts to reality. It is the organized part of the personality structure that is responsible for a variety of mental processes such as judgment, tolerance, reality testing, control, planning, defense, information processing, intellectual functioning, and memory. Psychopaths exhibit egoism, also called egotism or selfishness, in the extreme. Egoism is the view that morality is ultimately determined by one's own self-interest. It is the belief that self-interest is the correct motive for all human conduct and that it is the valid end of all actions. Psychopaths have a need for complete power and domination. Therefore, they are excessively prone to seek positions in society where they can have power over others. All exhibit overt or covered antisocial slash aggressive behavior. They believe they are entitled to demand what they think is rightfully theirs. They think it is their right to take things that normal people would consider a violation of boundaries. This usually makes them appear selfish. They also don't like to wait for things. They demand them immediately. They have an ability to rationalize any type of behavior, no matter how harmful, so that it appears warranted. They are able to do this in a manner which can persuade reasonable people that their behavior is justified. They also don't like to take responsibility for their actions, and may deny them. Poor behavioral control slash unreliability. Psychopaths exhibit poor behavior controls, frequently expressing irritability and impatience. For instance, they may quickly become angry, then, just as quickly let it go. During these fits they may use threats or verbal abuse. They are consistently irresponsible and unreliable, even about important things relating to their situations. They make poor life judgments and fail to learn from experience. They exhibit a lack of insight concerning themselves. Lying slash thrill seeking. Psychopaths are deceitful and manipulative. They are known for their pathological lying. They will lie about anything under any circumstances. While lying, they can appear completely sincere as a result of proper body language. They are perfectly capable of making eye contact and are likely to exploit the widespread misconception that those who make eye contact are telling the truth. Telling lies does not change their physiology. When they're caught in a lie they are able to alter the storyline to make it appear believable. Their ability to lie with absolute impunity is incredible. Their lies are said to be so potent that most people instinctively trust them. Their lies often advance a goal. When most people lie, there is usually an observable reason. Typically, something of value has been gained. However, psychopaths will also lie about things that most people wouldn't waste energy lying about. In other words, they will lie when they stand nothing to gain of apparent value. Researchers suggest that this is because they find it pleasurable. Deceiving people gives them a thrill. Psychopaths require considerable excitement to keep from becoming bored. So they frequently partake in thrill-seeking, which may cause them to move from relationship to relationship, or to seek new ventures. It also results in risk-taking in social, financial, and legal areas, as well as physical risk-taking. In addition, psychopaths will attack people simply because they think it is fun. Special Abilities and Advantages Apparently, due to their deficiencies in certain psychological and moral knowledge, they develop what some researchers describe as special abilities which most normal people do not have. These abilities give them an advantage over most normal people. I've categorized these in major areas that include perception, manipulation, attacks, and concealment. Psychopaths learn to recognize each other at an early age. They develop an awareness of being radically different from those around them. They are better than most normal people at perceiving the intellectual lives of others. They have a special type of insight into the psyche of others, which allows them to read people and size them up very quickly. This includes the detection of any likes, dislikes, motives, needs, weak spots, and vulnerabilities. This information can be instantly used for manipulation. Their impression management skills allow them to manipulate people. 
They appear alert, friendly, and easy to talk with. There is nothing noticeably odd about them. They seem to be happy and well-adjusted people. They are usually entertaining and are capable of telling fascinating stories that seem believable. They tend not to be delusional, irrational, anxious, or neurotic. Many are quite likable. Some psychopaths also have what seem to be excellent communication skills, which are enhanced by their tendency to initiate conversations due to a lack of inhibition. During an initial conversation, their speech is characterized by a type of verbal fluency which flows with ease. Their messages are usually filled with jargon, clichés, and other flamboyant phrases. These communication skills are more apparent than real because the actual content of their message is minimal. In addition, although their use of words appears to be correct, a closer observation reveals that they are improperly used. This may not be obvious to a casual observer because people often pay more attention to the way messages are delivered rather than the content. Regardless of the lack of content, the messages are delivered in a confident manner. Other attributes which allow them to manipulate people during conversations include charm, seduction, persuasiveness, and charisma. They can also instantly adjust their con as the situation changes to suit their plan. They are masters of impression management. When interacting with such an individual, most people would not suspect they were dealing with a psychopath. However, some of the less intelligent ones are not as smooth. They don't have the social or communication skills to interact with people. Instead, they rely on threats, coercion, intimidation, and violence to dominate and control others. Like their true personalities, their attacks are usually concealed, causing emotional and psychological damage. Their special insight into the psyche of others allows them to easily terrorize most normal people. Because they understand that they are radically different, many of their efforts are geared toward creating a mask of sanity. They go out of their way to appear normal and decent. They are also natural actors. Furthermore, because it is assumed that we all have a conscience, it is almost effortless for psychopaths to conceal themselves. Researchers who interact with them describe them as social chameleons and invisible human predators. They are able to mask not only who they really are but also their intentions. They can carry on this deception for extended periods. In addition to these abilities, they possess an ability to lie with complete sincerity an ability to rationalize any type of behavior in ways that appear convincing, and a lack of human emotions such as love, empathy, and remorse which allow them to carry out their acts. Plus they have an aggressive slash assertive personality which allows them to take the initiative in certain environments. Some who are intelligent can also use their mental skills to their advantage. Their special knowledge, however, loses its influence when normal people learn to understand them. Because the intelligence of normal people is usually superior, Normal people can learn to understand how they think and act. Negative Behavior Dr. Reed Mello explains in his book The Psychopathic Mind that these characters suffer from a type of unconscious inferiority complex, which is obscured from their conscious self. According to Dr. Mello, their hatred and envy of those they consider superior is the driving force for their behavior. Point 3. Dr. Lobazowski similarly suggests that their hyperactive need to achieve power over others is driven by internal anxieties which are a result of their inability to grow. In his book, People of the Lie, Dr. M. Scott Peck arrived at the same conclusion. These researchers advise that the extreme egotism displayed by these individuals, with all of its traits, e.g. selfishness, entitlement, need for domination and power, perpetual lying, etc., serves the primary purpose of fooling themselves rather than others. Motivated by these internal anxieties, they pursue goals and engage in battles that normal people would consider impractical, immature, or foolish. Normal people observing their behavior might be perplexed. When a normal person applies logic within the common worldview to determine why a psychopath has committed an act, they will be baffled. The application of such logic may take the form of statements such as, why would they do something like that when they have gained nothing? That was foolish. That makes no sense, why would they do that? This type of reasoning is irrelevant when dealing with psychopaths. Realizing the immaturity of antisocial characters is critical to understanding their behavior. Their chronological age or position in society should not be considered an indication of their maturity level. Some of their absurd acts and goals make perfect sense when you adjust your outlook to view them as being perpetrated by degenerate children. Attacks slash manipulative cycling Most psychopaths don't technically break the law and most never to go prison or mental hospitals. They lead seemingly normal lives by not hurting people in ways that attract attention. Their attacks are usually covered and subtle.
they are typically not held accountable for the physical, emotional, and psychological damage they inflict. Few victims report them to the police due to the shame they feel for being deceived. Although they usually don't commit crimes, their behavior is a type of crime within the context of natural law. As one of their special abilities, they can terrorize most normal people, often in covered ways. Just as they are able to mask themselves they can mask their attacks, which are often psychological and emotional. Their subtle arsenal of tactics is designed to place people on the defensive, make them retreat, or submit all done while being concealed. Psychopaths need frequent amusement and like to play games with people. Absent any goal, they will deceive and manipulate people because they find it exciting. They feel sadistic pleasure while mocking and controlling others. It offers them a thrill. To them it is fun. Many psychopaths focus on a single person at a time because it takes much effort to maintain a facade for multiple different people simultaneously. However, some do enjoy the challenge of running multiple deceits. Some are opportunistic and will take advantage of anyone. Others are more patient and wait for what they consider to be the perfect victim. Some enjoy the challenge of attacking confident people, while others prefer the weak and vulnerable. Some may target groups because members usually subscribe to an ideology which is easy to exploit. As long as they can appear to support these beliefs while in the presence of the group, their true motives won't be discovered. As we've learned, normal growth resulting from self-reflection is not experienced by psychopaths. Instead, their egos become larger. They do, however, engage in a type of ego maintenance, or what some researchers describe as an attack cycle or manipulative cycling. The manipulative cycling protects and enhances the inflated ego. Doctors Paul Bobiak and Robert Hare provide their version of the process which has three phases, including assessment, manipulation, and abandonment. During the assessment, psychopaths size people up to determine their usefulness as a source of money, power, sex, influence, etc. As they're determining if a potential target serves a need, they're also identifying the person's psychological strengths and weaknesses. In addition to selecting people to attack for what they can provide, they also select people they perceive as a threat to their survival. In these cases, they're not looking to obtain anything from the individual, only to beat them into submission. Dr. Martha Stout refers to this motive as existential vengeance. Upon closer inspection, we find that this motive serves another purpose. It offers them the satisfaction of devaluing people they see as better than themselves. After they have determined that a person will be useful, they use impression management skills consisting of charm and deceit to manipulate the individual in order to gain their trust. While this is happening, they're making a great first impression. Upon this impression, they create a fictitious character, a mask. The mask can vary depending on what they've determined that the victim needs to see. For instance, they can appear trustworthy, strong, naive, dominant, honest, submissive, or whatever else will allow them to gain someone's trust. The other trait which contributes significantly to their success in gaining trust is their ability to lie with utter conviction. They manipulate the potential victim by giving them carefully tailored messages. The feedback from these messages is analyzed and adjusted to build and maintain control. They then exploit from the person whatever they've determined to be useful. Because psychopaths view people as objects, their victims only have value for what they can provide. So, once a person has been used, they are discarded. The abandonment may also happen if they are bored or otherwise just through with the individual. It is usually abrupt. Worth mentioning again is the tendency for psychopaths to select certain people to attack because they see the psychological destruction of them as essential to their survival. Some specific traits exhibited by those who are identified for such reasons include, those who are morally admirable, classier, better looking, more popular, smarter, more accomplished, etc. Psychopaths are said to derive the most sadistic pleasure mocking, controlling, and humiliating such people. Dr. Meloy, who describes psychopaths as the embodiment of the hatred of goodness, says that it is their hatred and envy of those they consider better in some way that motivates their behavior. In addition, psychopaths will preemptively attack anybody who they believe has a certain insight into their true nature. The cycle has been described as a type of purification process for the psychopath. The apparent purpose is to remove value from the targeted person, to devalue them. It appears important to the psychopath that the person is degraded. This devaluation completes the cycle. Most people who are attacked by these characters report feeling drained and bewildered. Some researchers suggest there may even be energy consumption. Although psychopaths are able to keep up their facade for extended periods of time, there are situations where certain people are able to get a glimpse of their true identity point for first, 
astute individuals who are versed in psychology may spot them. In addition, people who are able to observe them over a long period of time will discover them. Also, it requires much mental energy for them to maintain their masks. They can't do it constantly. They need to rest. And they usually do this around individuals who they don't see as a threat or valuable. Such individuals are in a perfect position to provide normal people with critical insight into their true identity. Worldviews In the following chapters we'll see that the behavior demonstrated by some influential groups is identical to the procedure for dictatorship creation. To better understand the true nature of what is now occurring, however, some readers may need to slightly alter their worldview. This has already been accomplished to some extent now that we understand that these people exist, and will be expanded upon at this time. Psychopaths exist in their own world and are able to perceive and function in the other world, the world of the normal people. It has been said that normal people can learn their conceptual language quite well, but psychopaths are never able to accurately understand the worldview of normal people. Unlike the normal people, however, they are aware that this other world exists. They interact with it daily. And in this other world are the normal people with their silly ideas. While in this other world they must conceal themselves from the normal people who are not aware of their true nature. They also know that the normal people have these things called emotions which limit their behavior. They understand that they have no such limitations. They see this limitation as a weakness. They also realize how simple it is to terrorize these normal people. Although they can maneuver in this world, some of it, such as its customs of decency, is incomprehensible to them. The world of the normal community is morally condemning for them. They despise it. They frequently mock and cheat it. Their world has its own laws and customs. The common worldview of the normal person cannot conceive this other world. But just as someone can learn and use a foreign language with some difficulty, by replacing their common worldview with a modified version, a normal person can learn to comprehend this other world. This does not imply that they fully understand it or approve of it. A worldview is a kind of world perception that individuals and civilizations use as a guide to mentally orient themselves as they interpret and interact with society. It helps them develop and use knowledge. It includes concepts pertaining to religion, politics, economics, culture, science, values, emotions, and ethics, as well as opinions about what is true and false. While instincts and other influences affect an individual's development of a worldview, the family, community, and environment play considerable roles. Worldviews vary according to time, civilization, and race. Despite the minor differences spanning these realms, a single common worldview exists 5 it is a synthesis of the societal concepts of various civilizations and eras. This worldview is useful because it originated from the natural experiences of societies which were relatively civilized. However, this common worldview is not complete or highly accurate. It contains flaws. For instance, it is not totally accepted, it lacks data from many individual experiences which are essential, and it is not applicable in certain situations. Our civilization was insufficiently resistant to evil because it develops beyond the commonly perceivable areas of human consciousness. Specifically, within the common worldview there is a significant distance between what is considered proper thought and psychological reality. Another gap exists between legality and morality. Within these chasms evil is born and thrives. A careful observation of some factual historical and current events, which will be provided in the chapters that follow, will reveal that the common worldview is unrealistic. It is not consistent with objective reality. It is a fantasy. Psychopaths are completely aware that society is limited by the common worldview. They count on such naivety. Their activities are made possible by such unrealistic views. Protected by the common worldview, they function freely in society, attacking the naive normal people. Point six. Summary A considerable number of people in our society have no conscience. They exhibit a need to have power over others and seek positions in society which they believe will help them achieve it. They are often successful because of their special abilities which allow them to manipulate most normal people. They can easily conceal themselves and their intentions. Most of them move freely within society, hidden by the common worldview. They see others as objects to deceive and control. They frequently attack people for no reason other than feelings of sadistic pleasure. Most of their attacks are not illegal.